Hi and welcome to this new video. Okay, so in the past I've been told that I kind of do things a little bit slowly on these videos. So in this one, I'm going to do it super quick and show you how to create this blood stained floor. Um, and I'm going to try and explain the process as I go through and um, hopefully it'll be more appealing, sped up a little bit. Um, just let me know in the comments below if that is the case. If you prefer fast, speedy ones rather than the long, sort of uh, more explanation, then yeah, I'd be interested to know. So let's get started. Okay, so I start off with this uh, two pieces of geometry, on, one on top of the other, one sort of cube which has been squashed flat uh, to form like a base, and then on top of that, I place a uh, plane which I can then paint my transparency and my uh, liquid it could be water puddles it could be blood it could be any kind of liquid that you want on a floor or on a surface so I've put two materials on it one called uh, base and the other one called blood because I'm going to be painting some blood on here and uh, I've exported them as FBX, so let's jump straight into Substance Painter and get started. So here it is, I've imported it, and on first glance you can't really see that I've got two objects there, but there is, and you can see the two texture sets, base and one blood. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is bake down our texture sets. Um, I need to change the shader too, so let's just go and do that now. Uh, we've got it on PBR Metal Rough. I need to change that to uh, PBR Metal Rough with Alpha Blending. So we change that. That's done. Next, let's click on Blood. Uh, go into our Texture Set Settings here. Uh, we need to add an opacity, like so. Fairly straightforward. We're not going to do that with Base because we don't need an opacity for the Base. Uh, so now we're going to bake down our Texture Set. So I should have just kept it on. Um, you can see base has not got a got a uh, opacity uh, channel. So let's just I'm going to leave it at 2048. Click on bake. Uh, click off ID. I don't need any of that. We can use low poly mesh as high. We can click that. Leave everything else the same. Uh, bake all texture sets. Boom. Okay, that's done. Uh, let's just go to base. Uh, the base layer I had steel rough, so let's just drop that in there. There we go. Let me just make sure my... Okay, I don't want panorama here. I want one of these perhaps because it's really deceptive. If you don't have good lighting or, or neutral lighting, it can be deceptive um, when you're actually painting because it can alter the look of it. It doesn't come bake out, but it might influence how you paint. So uh, let's just play with these neutrals here for a moment. And I think I usually use that one there, actually. Um, let's just try different ones here. Yeah, that's the, one I, that's the one I do. So I normally use this soft to our high contrast because of that very reason. So it's neutral and it's got high contrast. And it, yeah, that's cool. Okay, so that's what I need. Uh, still rough done. Let's click on blood. And here I'm just going to put a paint layer. It's what I call a paint layer. It's just a standard layer. It's not a fill layer. So it's one of these. Boom. Uh, so that's in now. And you can see in my materials, I've got an opacity layer, so I'm going to switch that on. Um, right. First of all, I'm going to paint the blood all over the square. So I'm going to turn off these for now. I'm going to select my color, a bit of red, make it dark. It's going to be rough. It's not going to be shiny at all. Somewhere around here. Go to my brushes. Click. Doesn't really matter at this stage. Make it big, just paint everywhere. Now then, is that 
it's not dark enough I don't think let's just pull it down a bit more a bit more intense there we go it's quite an intense color yeah Okay, so now we're going to start painting in our opacity to give us the general shape of our blood stain on the floor. So we're going to turn on our opacity here, make our, our brush bigger. You can change the brush if you want, but for now that's fine. Make sure that, uh, and just start painting away like this. Now, I just like doing it like this because I can get the general shape that I want. I can just take pieces away leave bits behind because it's quite nice just to leave bits of sort of make sure you get rid of these lines you don't want them um, I like the rough edge that this gives you just take it away just get your general shape and we can do little sort of marks and splashes out on the outer edges here later so I'll just take these edges down like so make sure you don't leave any of the straightness behind because that's not what you want so work it into it a little bit I'm sure there's a procedural method for doing all of this but you know I just like to paint away and you get a custom blood stain then um, there we go, let's have a look at that. Right then, okay, that's a start. Now we're going to add some, a bit of shininess. So we're going to bring the uh, rough back into it. If we paint now, not like that, we're going to make our opacity up. Let's just fill in some of our, like this, there we go. Let's get some shininess. You want the dryness around the edge, and later on we can add a sort of, well, I'll show you what we'll do later, but we can add this, like that. There we go, right. And get a height, just give it a little bit of height. Is that the right? Too much. So it's blood that's been dripped on the floor. So it's curdling. No, it's too much again. Just take the height, just, just, just play with your height. Now we're going to add some spots on here. It's probably a bit too much. Turn the metals, turn that metal off. There we go. Yep, too much. We need to take down the height. There we go. And it's the combination of height. Uh, roughness that's going to give you the variation of your sort of blood drips and blood splats and your shininess on the surface of your of your blood basically let's just take out that take down that roughness and the contrast of this sort of dried blood out here with drips that, you know you can lead the drips away as if it's Or you can have a big splash, as if something sort of sprayed over the surface. That's cool. Different variations of, you know, let's try inks. I think I used this a bit. Yeah, that's a bit too much. Okay, let's pull this down. There 
we go there. Let's work around the outer edges a little bit more. Okay, now we can select our um, mode. I quite like this one. The only thing you've got to remember when you do using this technique is to make sure you're not using the eraser here. If you use the eraser, the red will just come back. Let me demonstrate. Well, it's white because the color's set to white. But you can't use that. You have to paint away and you have to use the opacity if you want to use this technique. You don't have to, but I just find it looks a bit more convincing and quite cool. And you can have the strength. You can change the strength of the opacity to whatever you want. back here white we don't want white let's get a dropper pick the color off of here yeah, have some variation in some of this color here running through it especially yeah, just gonna be careful a little bit just bring the color down You know, just keep going until you get a really messy sort of blood because blood sort of dries not that I really know too much about it but blood you know it, it will dry out and start cracking and um, changes color if you look for some reference you'll see what I mean but it's um let's crank up the height here a little bit let's give give it some more uh, let's have a look here Okay, let's have a look what we've got here. Different brushes. If we go into our alphas, there's probably something in here we can use. Alphas are pretty good. Footsteps. A bit big. <laughs> yeah, some other scenes. Got some foot, foot, footsteps everywhere. Turn off all the uh, get some opacity and start taking out some of this. Yeah, because I think it's just too much. You know, we can just take out some of this. Let's go back to our brushes actually. Okay, so let's work on some colouring here. So it's just a bit more colour. It looks pretty gruesome already, actually. So don't want to go too far with it. So you can do too much if you're not careful. Um, Okay, so once you're fairly satisfied with the gungy mess you've made, just right click on your layer, add a, a levels. And in the levels here, you can um, you can change the channel and what you want to modify. Let's just go to roughness and just, just tweak the roughness because to start with, because this gives you can do a lot with this and make it really a lot more patchy and or glossy or. Pulling those values 
quite tight. Now if you turn off your base, you can see the edges and just check uh, that you haven't got these edges because if you get this into a game and you got this, it will show up. So you need to go through and um, just get rid of, oops, make sure you've got your opacity switched on. Turn everything else off. Go to your brush site. Make sure you've got everything switched off apart from your opacity. Turn that right down and just go around and make sure you clean up these edges with a decent brush because you don't want these straight edges on your on your uh, map. Obviously when you get this into a game you don't want to be able to see this. So just keep going till you're happy with it. You know, I've put the levels on. Uh, I've worked on it some more, worked it down, got a really good looking blood base, changed my values, and now I've got a disgusting mess on my floor, um, which is exactly what I'm after. Now, if you combine this, you know, if you had a gruesome game and you combine this with other parts and bits of guts and things like that, then you could get quite a good convincing mess going on here um, so I hope you enjoyed that that's it for now I'm going to leave it there um, you can work into this as much as you like and to make it as detailed as you like or as gruesome as you like whatever and um, yeah so I hope you enjoyed that that's it for now and I'll see you next time